Hello there! You guys asked me if I can talk a bit about cut content of Day of Defeat some more. Well, let's quench your thirst. In the past we have discussed the fact that the original Day of Defeat had a lot more weapons and different classes than Day of Defeat Source. And just recently we took a look at the first Day of Defeat Source. Yes, the first, because the very first attempt at creating Day of Defeat Source was just a portation of the original Day of Defeat to the Source engine. This means that originally there were supposed to be more weapons and classes in Day of Defeat Source. But did you know that there were more classes and weapons supposed to be in the original Day of Defeat? If you browse the community tab of Day of Defeat you might have stumbled across this picture, which shows the selection screen of a Mortar class. At first thought, well, this could be just some community made up stuff. However, no, it's not. The Mortar class was originally proposed for Day of Defeat. Sadly, information on this issue is kind of rare. Day of Defeat has always been less covered than Counter-Strike. For example, all the stuff regarding Counter-Strike Condition Zero is rather well documented. Day of Defeat's development, yeah, it's a bit more clouded. So we should consider ourselves lucky that the mortar is so well documented. Not in writing, but in, well, not physical form, but we do have the models and sounds for it. The mortar class was supposed to be available for all factions. The Germans, Americans and British were all supposed to get the same mortar. As we can see here, all the appropriate arms were available. It would have been the primary weapon of the class and similar to the machine gun, it would need to be set up to be fired. And here we see an approximation of what it could have looked like when fired. The explosion has been simulated with a grenade, because the mortar was never finished. Overall, I think this could have been an interesting addition to Day of Defeat's formula. You got the bazooka, Panzerschreck and Piat for, well, heavy support. But a mortar would have been even a bigger boom, I guess. This being an indirect fire weapon, it would have been interesting to see how it could be implemented. Because firing a mortar indoors? Mm, yeah, that would be kind of hard. I mean the projectile would basically hit the roof. Then again, Day of Defeat was never that realistic. Firing a Panzerschreck in a small room is pretty much deadly for yourself. The backblast is tremendous. Also, the mortar projectile would travel a bit, so the explosion would definitely be delayed. How this could have impacted gameplay, or rather the viability of this gun, is interesting. Maybe it was cut because it just didn't make much sense to have a grenade launcher that, well, has a big fire-to-impact delay. Irregardless of that, it could have been tremendously effectful in regards to suppressing fire, blocking accessibility to an objective. But it is a weapon that would definitely require teamwork, as the mortar class is rather defenseless on its own. An interesting side note here. Back in the day when Day of Defeat Source just came out and the beta was available, it seems that this class was on everyone's mind, or at least on the fans' mind. Because during an interview the creators of Day of Defeat Source were asked, what info do you have on the Mortar class? The only info we have is the sounds which have already been made. They sound particularly good and are also present in some of the background sounds on Avalanche. This interview answer pretty much gives it away, they were not really planning on implementing it. But what do you think about it? Would you like to have seen the Mortar class in Day of Defeat? Would it even fit into the gameplay? And that's the point I am very skeptical of. Yeah, I think um, maybe this weapon would have been a bit too much, especially on the small maps. A lot of them take place within ruins and it's a lot of indoor areas. So I figure this weapon could have been kind of useless. Nonetheless, a very interesting piece of cut content. And just the sound you hear when you're on the receiving end of a mortar round, well... A very impactful sound. Oh, and just in case this question comes up, yes, I do think this weapon would work better in Day of Infamy. The maps are a bit bigger there. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Give the like, subscribe, and maybe consider supporting us on Patreon, because our Patreon supporters got to see this video first. To them and everyone else, thanks for watching. So, see you guys next time. Until then, have a nice day and as always, goodbye and guten Tag.